Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. I upload videos about motherhood and lifestyle every single Sunday. And today's video is going to be a sort of what I had for dinner video. I'm showing you one crock pot meal and two simple recipes because when it comes to cooking, I always look for things that don't require a lot of ingredients and don't take a lot of time. So without further ado, let's get into the recipes. The first recipe we're going to make is a barbecue pineapple chicken in the crock pot and this is literally the simplest recipe because it's only three ingredients that you need. So all you need is one bottle of barbecue sauce of your choice, one can of diced pineapple chunks or one fresh pineapple, whatever you prefer, and a package of boneless skinless chicken breast. So first you're just gonna throw all of your chicken in and then add the pineapples and the barbecue sauce. You can drain your pineapples or use the juice, but personally, Brandon and I don't like ours to be too sweet, so I drain mine before putting them in, but like I said, whatever you prefer. After all the ingredients are in, I like to mix everything together. Hopefully you have more than one hand to do this because I was clearly struggling. And you don't have to do this, but I like to do it with crock pot meals just to make sure all the flavors are evenly distributed. Now just cover everything up and set your crock pot on high for three to four hours or low for six to eight hours. It just depends on how fast your crock pot cooks and how thick your chicken is. After about two and a half hours, this is what my chicken looked like. It was pretty shreddable, but still just a little bit tough. So I let it sit for another like 45 minutes or so. After the 45 minutes was up, I plated it and this is what it looked like. We had it with broccoli and rice, but we've also had it with carrots before and I've also put it in those little aesthetically pleasing pineapple halves, which made it really fun to eat. And Peyton and Brandon both really like this meal and it's super easy to make, so it's definitely a staple for us. The next recipe I'm showing you is my new favorite meal for fall. It's a butternut squash mac and cheese and I actually got it from Tiffany Beeston so I will link her video below. Peyton absolutely devoured this but Brandon was not the biggest fan and I will explain why in a little bit. But all you need for this is one whole butternut squash, one box of whatever pasta you like. I chose elbow macaroni because mac and cheese, um, any kind of milk of your choice, some butter, and shredded sharp cheddar cheese. I ended up using a little bit of mozzarella cheese because my husband is a cheese bandit and eats a handful of cheese whenever he opens the fridge, so I ran out of cheddar. <laughs> So first you're going to want to throw your butternut squash in the crock pot. This makes cooking squash so freaking easy. It's insane. Um, my crock pot is really small so I had to chop mine up and like finesse it in there and I didn't even have room for it all so I just set aside two pieces. But you'll want to cook that on high for four hours. So after four hours, this is what the squash will look like. As you can see, it's literally so soft. You can cut through it with a spoon and the skin just like falls right off. It's amazing. So while I'm doing this next part, I'm just going to cook my pasta. Now, before I cook the squash, I should have taken the seeds out because it was pretty hard to do when it was in chunks like this. So next time I will definitely take them out beforehand, but that's just what I'm doing right here. Just taking the seeds out and removing the skin from the squash. Mm -hmm. 
Now that my squash is de-seeded and skinned, I'm going to drain my pasta and mix it together with the squash. Then I'm gonna pour in some milk and this is all done to your preferred taste and texture. So if you think it needs more milk, add more milk and then the same goes for the butter and the cheese. Also, I'm sorry that you can't really see what I'm doing here, um, but this was the only bowl that I had big enough to fit everything in, so you'll just have to bear with me for the time being. Okay, now I'm going to add in all the cheese that I have left that my husband did not eat. And if I were to make this for him again, which I don't think I ever will because he did not like it. He does not like vegetables and I didn't tell him that this was butternut squash mac and cheese. I just told him that it was regular baked mac and cheese and he was very disappointed. Um, so if I were to make this again, I would definitely add a lot more cheese to kind of try to mask the taste of the butternut squash. I personally love the taste of the butternut squash, so I loved it just the way it is. But if you're trying to mask that taste, then definitely add more cheese. And as you can see, I just added a little bit of salt and if I had pepper, I would have added pepper as well. However, I ran out, so it was just salt today. So this is what everything looks like when all the goodness is mixed in together and now I'm just going to put it all into a baking dish or rather struggle to put it into a baking dish. As I mentioned before, I topped mine with a little bit of mozzarella cheese before I put it into the oven. So that's what I'm doing here. And now I'm just going to bake it in the oven on 350 for about 25 minutes. This is what it looked like after baking for 25 minutes. Oh my gosh, it looked so freaking good. Um, but Tiffany Beeston put hers on broil for four minutes after that. I don't really think it did anything, but it looked like it did in her video. So I figured I'd try it out. <laughs> This is what it looks like after broiling for four minutes. And like I said, I don't really think it did anything, but wow, looking at it, it makes me want to eat it again. It looks so good. Okay, so this is the finished product. And oh my goodness, this was my favorite meal out of the three meals that I made this week. It was so freaking good. And I'm not even kidding when I say that Peyton ate probably like 75% of that baking dish. She had leftovers the next day for lunch and dinner. She <laughs> loved this, so I highly recommend it. If you have kiddos who really like mac and cheese and you're trying to get their vegetables in, throw the butternut squash in there. Um, if your husband's like mine and doesn't like vegetables and is just an uncultured swine, then maybe he won't like it, but it's worth a try. Okay, so the next meal that I'm going to be showing you is stuffed peppers, and this is such like a cozy meal for me. I love stuffed peppers. So what you'll need for this is three bell peppers, one pound of ground beef, mine is the 81% lean one, um, one half of an onion. I normally use yellow, but the commissary only had good white ones, so I use white for this. Uh, however much garlic you want, I used four to five cloves, but that's just because we love our stuff super garlicky. One can of this Prego roasted garlic and herb sauce. Um, mozzarella cheese, I normally put mine in my mixture, but I was only able to top it off because like I said, my husband is a cheese bandit and eats it all every time I get it. Um, and then whatever kind of rice you want, I we just eat white rice in this house, so white rice it was. 
The first thing we're going to do is prepare our vegetables starting with our peppers. So I'm just cutting the tops off of these and getting the seeds out of the inside. And don't get rid of the tops that you cut off because we're actually going to use whatever we can get off of those inside of our mixture. So save those. Um, I also want to apologize for my chopping in this video. The knife that I was using was super dull and when I watch people like roughly chop things in videos it gives me anxiety so I highly apologize if <laughs> my chopping in this video gives you anxiety. I'm just going to throw the peppers in just below simmering water um, and we're going to do that for four minutes just until they get a little bit soft. Now I'm just taking out the stems and the seeds of the tops of my peppers and chopping those up along with the onion and garlic. Now I'm just throwing my onion and garlic into a pan with a little bit of oil and letting those cook for a little bit before I go ahead and throw my meat in there. And then once my peppers were a little bit soft, I went ahead and drained them and then rinsed them in cool water and then placed them out to dry um, while my husband did flutter kicks with Peyton. <laughs> Then I just went ahead and threw my rice into my rice cooker. I made about one cup of cooked rice while my meat was still cooking. And then to the meat, I added a little bit of salt, garlic powder, and chili powder. I ended up adding a little bit more later, but this is all I got on film. And don't worry, Peyton was nowhere near the open flame. She's safe. When your meat is pretty much done cooking, you'll want to add in your peppers until they get nice and soft and then add in your sauce. I used about two thirds of the jar, but this again is just to your taste. And if you like a thicker mixture, don't use as much sauce. If you like a thinner mixture, use a little bit more. Then once the rice is done, have your husband throw that in there because he wants to give you the child and start to mix that up. Every time I watch this, I giggle because I don't really know what strategy he had when he was mixing all of it up, but this is what it looked like when everything was thrown in there. Then I'm just spooning the mixture into the peppers. This made just enough to make three peppers with a little leftover to give to Peyton because I didn't want to give it to her in the pepper. That would be pointless. Um, but if your peppers are a little smaller, I would just either make a little less or you'll have a bunch left over to eat without the pepper. And then I'm going to top it with mozzarella cheese and cover it with tin foil. And I'm going to bake it at 350 with the tin foil on for about 50 15 minutes, uncover it, and then bake it for another 10 to 15 minutes uncovered. Mm -hmm. 
Peyton got a little restless, so I ended up feeding her before ours was done, but I just wanted to show you guys that she really enjoyed it. Um, you can see her signing for more here, but for some reason she was refusing to touch it So that's why I was feeding it to her with the spoon. You can see here I don't know what it was about it. Maybe the rice in it that weirded her out. And she didn't like the texture, but She really enjoyed it. She just didn't want to touch it <laughs> After the full 30 minutes was up, this is what they looked like and they look so good. I can't wait to make these again. But I will say, uh, Brandon didn't really enjoy the outside pepper, but he really liked the stuffing. But the one thing that he said was it just needed a little bit more flavor. And I personally didn't really like the taste of the sauce that I chose. So next time I'll probably just make a homemade one and throw it in there but they were still really good and Peyton really enjoyed it and Brennan enjoyed it so it's a win in my book all right guys that is it for today's video if you enjoyed this and you want me to do more cooking style videos give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss whenever I upload a new video and until next time I will talk to you guys later bye